In this video, I'm going to explain what's meant by the callback Liebler divergence, and I'm going to use an example of transmitting messages using secret codes to try and explain this concept. So I've written out at the top here the formula for the callback Liebler divergence, or I'm just going to call it the KL divergence, um, from going from some distribution P of X to another distribution Q of X. But this is, you know, a mathematical formula, so what does that actually mean? What we're going to imagine is that we've got two primitive languages. One of them we're going to call P, and another one we're going to call Q. And these primitive languages are composed of words which are made up of only three letters, A, B, and C. And the two languages have different frequencies with which these three letters occur. In language P, A occurs half of the time, so half of the time there is a letter, the letter is the, the letter A, and a quarter of the time for B and a quarter of the time for C. Whereas Q is slightly different, A is less common in, in Q, it occurs just one quarter of the time, B is more common so it occurs half the time, and C is exactly the same, occurring at one quarter of the time. So we can ask the question, how would we design an optimal binary code for each of the two languages? So the idea is that what we could do is we could imagine that we're trying to design a binary code for language P, and that might look something like this. So A we would represent just by uh, a zero, B we would represent by zero one, and C we would represent by one one. So you might be wondering why I've chosen this specific binary codes here where there are others that are available. Well, the idea is that this binary code that I've chosen here is the shortest possible code such that it is, is completely unambiguous. So if I have A followed by B here, it's impossible to get that confused with any other letter combination that I have here. We know that sort of if I was to write that down, A, B, that would be 0 and then 0, 1. I know because there are no other codes that start 0, 0, that this must in fact be A, A, and then B is 0, 1, and you can make a similar argument for words involving C. So any message that we encode using this kind of crib sheet here is uniquely decodable. And what we can do is we can say, well, what's the length of each of these code words here? For the letter A, clearly it's just of a length 1, and for B and C, it's of length two. So this is some function which I'm gonna call here L of P. It's just the sort of length for the optimal code in language P. Then we can do the same thing for language Q. So for language Q, we're gonna have a slightly different code. A and B essentially are just gonna swap positions. So A is now just gonna be zero, one. B is gonna be just zero, and C is going to be one, one. And similarly, now we can work, work out what our sort of L distribution is now. I'm now going to call that L of Q here to avoid uh, any confusion with the, that from language P. And so what we have here is a length of 2 for letter A, 1 for B, and 2 for C. So what we can do now is we can work out, if we were to use our code, our optimal code that we've created for language P, to transmit a message which is written in language P, what would be the expected length of messages? And we can do this by working out, well, what's the expected length of a code word for a given letter written in language P? So we're just going to write, well, what's the expected value of L of P, given that we are writing a, or we are encoding a message which is written in language P? So all that this is really saying is, well, what's the average length of a given letter which we have encoded from language P into our code that we've written up here? And so we see it's gonna be somewhere between one and two because the maximum length of a code word for a letter is two and the minimum length is one. But what do we actually get here? Well, we just get half the time we get letter A and then the length is one plus a quarter of the time we get a B, and so that's got a length of two, and then finally we get a quarter of the time C, and that's also got a length of two. So if we add these things together, we get three over two. And that makes sense because 
A occurs twice as often as B or C, and it's got a code length which is half as long. And so the average length of a letter in terms of our code language is just halfway between one and two. We can also do the same thing, but now asking, suppose we use this encoding, this particular crib sheet here to encode a message. And so now we're gonna say, well, what's the expected value of L of Q given that we are actually transmitting a message in language P. So we expect that this isn't gonna be quite as short as the average letter length for the previous case because we know that we are using a suboptimal encoding here. So if we sort of churn through the maths here, well, in language P, we get half of the time we get letter A and our length of our code is now two, so we get half times two, plus then we get a quarter of the time B times a length of one, plus one quarter of the time we get a C, and that's got a length of two. And if we just go through the maths here, we get seven over four, which is greater than three over two. And now what we can do is we can just work out the expected difference in letter length for that a language which is encoded using Q, our, our crib sheet optimized for Q, minus a encoding which is optimized for P, given that we are transmitting in language P. Then here we just get the difference between these two quantities, seven over four minus three over two, which if you work it out is just a quarter. Okay, so this a quarter here tells us that essentially, if we transmit a message using our code language, which is optimized to language Q, for a message which is written in language P, then each letter, the, the code is one quarter bit longer than is optimal, than it could be. Okay, so what does this actually have to do with the callback Liebler divergence? Well, it turns out that this difference in the average code length of letters that I've worked out here is exactly that of the callback Liebler divergence in going from a distribution P of X to one Q of X. And we can prove that that's the case here if we just sort of plug in our terms in the formula. So here we get KL is equal to, if we're using P of X, we start off with a half for, for letter A times log to the base two of P of X over Q of X. So that's just gonna be two here. Plus, then we're gonna get a quarter of the time B, we're gonna get a quarter now divided by a half times uh, or the log of that rather, so we get the log to the base two of a half. And then finally, the last term, we just get a quarter times the log to the base two of one. So that last term here is just gonna disappear because log of one is zero. And if we just go through the maths here, we get a half, times log two to the power, or to the base two rather, which is just one. So we just get a half plus a quarter times log one minus log of two. So both of these are the base two. And hence we get a half minus a quarter, which equals a quarter, because this log one here has just disappeared. So the callback Liebler divergence that we've worked out here is exactly the difference in the length or the expected length of code messages written in the two different encodings for a language written in P. So the callback Liebler divergence provides a kind of measure of informational cost. The informational cost that it measures is the increased length of messages from using a suboptimal encoding of a given language. In general, the callback Liebler divergence isn't exactly equal to this quantity that I've calculated here for other distributions of letters. And the reason for that is because here, I've deliberately chosen the denominators here to always be powers of two, which means that the optimal encoding for a given letter is always going to be an integer. Whereas you can imagine that if I had a quantity here which where this wasn't the case, then you might actually get out or you will get out an optimal encoding length 
which is not an integer, and that's not possible in binary. And so the callback Liebler divergence kind of provides a lower bound on informational cost. But you can still think about it in terms of the way that I've uh, described it here.